Good morning. Welcome to day 109 of Bible in a Year. As we're going through the Bible in 365 days, from Genesis to Revelation, uh, traveling through the Holy Bible. Why? Because it's the greatest love story ever told between God and humanity. We've broken it down into different sections, known as the Adventure Timeline, by Jeff Cavins. And right now we are in the period of Royal Kingdom. Uh, and so, that's why you see me wearing purple. Yeah. My name is Pastor Jay Lutz. And today we're going through 1 Samuel 15 to 16 and Psalm 61. So 1 Samuel 15 to 16 recalls Saul's weakness in his inordinate preoccupation with how people view him. This is the sin of vanity, which is more than simply an obsession with one's physical appearance. While we shouldn't care to what degree other people think of us, um, it's not, a, not completely a sin to think of ourselves. It's just if it's our primary motive of how we act, then it becomes vanity. The Lord has told Saul to have Israel destroy all the flocks and the herds of Malachites. The people refuse. They decide to destroy only that which they want to keep the good and then give some of it to God. As Samuel says, though the Lord desires obedience to his voice more than burnt offerings and sacrifices, obedience to the will of God is the heart of holiness. And because of Saul's disobedience, the Spirit of God departs Saul, leading to much disaster. Samuel has told Saul the Lord has sought out a man of his, after his own heart. We see last chapter in verse 14. When Samuel goes to Jesse, he sees that Jesse's oldest son is tall and handsome, just like Saul. But God sees his heart and he rejects him. We uh, come to realize that God doesn't judge according to appearances, but by heart. And the Lord desires an obedient heart, a heart that wants what he wants. This is what it's meant to have a heart after God's heart. It can be difficult to listen to him and understand what God wants, particularly when we'd rather do what we want. Uh, we need the help and the grace of God in order to. And Psalm 61 is a psalm of David. It's a petition or lament of a king who feels himself at the brink of death and cries out to God's saving presence. Um, uh, and because of this, he promises to give thanks to God. And so we see this in Psalm 61. So let's get into it. Let's read chapter 15 of 1 Samuel. Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you, king over the people of Israel. So listen, now with the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they, wa when they waylaid them as, the can as they came up from Egypt. Now go attack the Amalekites and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle, sheep, camels, and donkeys. So Saul summoned the men and mustered them to lame. 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men from Judah. Saul went to the city of Amalek and set an ambush in the ravine. Then he said to the Kenites, Go ahead, leave the Amalekites so that I do not destroy you along with them. For you showed kindness to all Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites moved away from the Amalekites. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Hivla to Shur to the east of Egypt. He took Agog, king of the Amalekites, alive and all his possessions. He totally destroyed with the sword, but Saul and the army spared Agog and the best of the sheep, cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs, everything that was good. These they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak they totally destroyed. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel, I have grieved that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me and not carried out my instructions. Samuel was troubled, and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone down on down to Gilgal. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, What then is the bleeding of sheep in my ears? What is the lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle and sacrificed to the Lord your God, but we totally destroyed the rest. Stop, 
Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord has said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission saying, go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Make war on them until they have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? But I say, obey the Lord. Saul said, I, I went on a mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Malachites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Today, to obey is better than to sacrifice. To heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the words of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the people, and so I gave in to them. Now I beg you, forgive my sins and come back with me so that I will worship the Lord. But Samuel said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. As Samuel turned to leave, Saul caught hold of the hem of his robe and it tore. Samuel said to the Lord, said to him, The Lord has torn the king of Israel from you today and has given it to one of your neighbors, to one better than you. He who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change his mind, but he is not a man that he should change his mind. Saul replied, I have sinned, but please honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel. Come back with me so that I might worship the Lord your God. Samuel went back with Saul, and Saul worshiped the Lord. Then Samuel said, Bring me Agog, king of the Amalekites. Agog came to him, with com came to him confidently, thinking, Surely the bitterness of death is past. But Samuel said, As your sword has made women childless, so will your mother be childless among women. And Samuel put Agag to death before the Lord at Gilgal. Then Samuel left the Ramah for Ramah, but Saul went up to his home in Gibeah of Saul. Until the day Samuel died, he did not go to Saul, see Saul again, though Samuel mourned for him. And the Lord was grieved that he had made Saul king over Israel. Chapter 14. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace I have come to sacrifice the Lord. Uh, consecrate yourselves and come into the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel sought Eliab and thought, Surely the anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and, called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by. But Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass by Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? They're still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he's tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord says, Rise and anoint. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. Now the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. 
Saul, attendants, said to him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the harp. He will play when the evil spirit from God has come upon you, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, Find someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I have seen the son of Jesse of Bethlehem, who knows how to play the harp. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine-looking man, and the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. See, Jesse took a donkey and loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them with his son David to Saul. David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much, and David became one of his armor bearers. Then Saul sent word to Jesse, saying, Allow David to remain in my service, for I am pleased with him. Whenever the Spirit from God came upon Saul, David took his harp. David would take his harp and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Psalm 61, a psalm of David. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me not to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tents forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Then will I ever sing praise to your name and fulfill my vows day after day. Here ends the psalm. I love this psalm. Uh, I just I love the imagery when he says that um, I call as my heart grows faint, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So God is seen as the rock, the refuge, the tower. Um, and then he gives this other imagery. I long to dwell in your tents forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. He sees God as kind of like a mother figure, like a hen or um, one of the anim- one of the bird birds that uh, coddles the child the uh, baby chick under the wings and keeps them safe from all harm and destruction. And so this is how, this is how David sees God, which is a beautiful imagery. Then we see also um, the Lord rejecting Saul here because Saul doesn't, doesn't seem to want to be obedient him or the people. They think that they are the exception to the rule in the sense of they think that they can do no wrong and that as long as they do whatever they want, that God somehow will walk alongside. And we do this all the time as people. We, we look to our own selves to justify each other that if I do something, as long as somebody else is doing it, um, that there's sort of this misery and company with the uh, company loves misery sort of idea. Uh, but it isn't what God wants. God has uh, has his standards of perfection that he wants us to strive for. And he He ultimately wants our obedience. And Saul is not willing to give this his obedience to God and neither the people. And so God rejects him. It's a sad story. Uh, not to say there isn't some good attributes about Saul, but ultimately, if you don't obey and you're supposed to be king, you're supposed to lead as a king that being in obedience to the one in which, uh, who bread, who uh, butters your bread, who who brings you all the power and authority that you have as a king. So, unfortunately, but then we see this humble King David that is anointed, and it's going to be a start of a new era here in these following chapters. And so, keep as we go through talking about David. Uh, I thank you for joining and carrying along with me in this Bible in a year so far. Uh, it's a great adventure. We are already on page 109. And so I just thank God for you to be coming alongside and, and reading this Bible with me. I always love the Bible because it's a story. It's a beautiful story. And it all links together. And as we read along, we start to understand the heart of God. And that, as it says here, that the God that God doesn't look on the outward appearance, but he looks on the things of the heart. And so I pray that as you go through this, you might also learn the heart of God and how to give him obedience and praise and honor and glory. 
I uh, ask that you might pray for me as we go through this journey, that I might continue in the strength of God to read for you and to be here to encourage you to read this Bible and to fall in love with God over and over again as he falls in love with us, his people. Let's give thanks uh, in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks. We give you the glory today. We honor you for all that you are and all that you've done. We give you thanks not only for calling us to be yours, but those before us. Uh, that we always might fall in obedience to you, O Lord, because we know there are consequences to our sins. There are consequences to saying no and caring what other people think over you. You continue to restore us, to continue to be with us. In our weakness, you are strong. In our faithfulness, in our faithlessness, you are faithful. As we praise you and honor you, we love you. Thank you so much for all that you've given us. May all honor and glory and praise be to you. Uh, may we always love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day.